Every year, thousands of people from all over the world make a pilgrimage to Buffalo to wander through two amazing homes built by Frank Lloyd Wright, the Darwin Martin House and the Great Cliff Estate. I grew up dreaming of being a rock star, but maybe I picked the wrong profession. Seems like today, architects are feeling the love. After taking tours of both houses, I was curious to meet a few of these Frank Lloyd Wright fanatics. Who are they and what draws them to Buffalo? So your name is Graham? Graham Nixon, yep. Okay, you're related to Richard? No, no, no. Hi, Walter. Hi, nice Ivy. To nice to meet you. Where are you from? We're actually from Toronto, Toronto, Canada. From Tacoma, Washington. Charlotte, North Carolina. Longmont, Colorado. We, in any one day, could have people from Japan, China, England, Ireland, Wales, Italy, France, the Netherlands, Germany, and Spain. And of course, Canada. All across Canada. I guess I don't even think of Canada as being a foreign country since they're so close to us. We're from Burlington, Ontario. This is our fourth, fifth place we've seen for Frank Lloyd Wright. And when I heard it was right down the block, literally I came screaming through construction sites to get here. There's something that happens the more right sites you see. Even today, I had no intention of coming in. The, the, I, there's something that draws me I think you're here. kind of addicted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've been here, I think this is my fifth or sixth time. My wife said, oh, we gotta move here because this stuff is amazing. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're getting season tickets and we're getting the big uh, thumbs with the Frank Lloyd Wright on them. So your house is modeled in part on the Martin House, Fra or Frank Lloyd Wright in general. Uh, it was remodeled to <laughs> incorporate some features, oh, yes. that's fantastic. <laughs> These earrings are from a design that Frank Lloyd Wright did and it was the windows in the Frank Thomas House out in Illinois. I love it, a whole integration of nature and living space, it's wonderful. And when you're in the ground floor, you can feel the sense of light coming through it. And you, you, you get this sense of not being sure whether you're in the house or actually outside in nature. There's balance in everything he does, and that's what the beauty of it, if you're interested in design at all, or if you just want to know, why does this look so nice? Why is this so pleasing? And he answers those questions for you. The lines not only in the house and in the building itself, but also in all of the windows and the furniture. I knew they were doing a restoration, so I would come back and, you know. So it's kind of neat to come back and see the progress. Yeah, yeah. You can go online and everything else. It's nothing like walking through it. <laughs> what is it like to stand inside there and be in there? It, it's, it fills me, like it sounds trite. It fills me with awe. Like you almost sort of get emotional. Well, I do about architecture anyhow. I get sort of choked up. You can read about it, but until you experience it, you, you don't get the full grasp. My mind is turning. Just amazing, his thought pattern, uh, the detail. And his architecture was so far ahead of its time. You won't believe you find this in Buffalo. This is a hundred years ago. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? When you compare it to all the other Victorian uh, style houses, it's really like different. It's, it's radical, you know? Right. You look across the street at what was being done at the time, and then you think, how did somebody in 1907 just completely revolutionize, throw everything away, and do something different? You know, he once said that the an architect's greatest tools are an eraser at the drawing board and a wrecking bar at the site because he was always experimenting. It was a piece of art to him, not just architecture. You learn a bit about him, who he was, and, and look at the inter idiosyncrasies of his styling. His attention to detail is what really uh, exactly. really gets you. I mean, yeah. right down, even to the point where the jokes about him coming in and rearranging the furniture, the original, because that was his plan. I think it reminds you of how good buildings can be, how beautiful they can be. You forget when we build these, you know, paper condos, that you could have this. Would you like to live in a Frank Lloyd Wright home? I think so, because it's extremely uh, practical. Absolutely. I, I'd live in the garage, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd probably live in the garage, yeah, too. I, I, in fact, I am living in a garage right now. So, so who's got the best wins, anchor or cup? I'm Nelson Starr. <laughs> See you next time on Buffalo for Real TV.